I mean, if you wanted to go really, really pulling some stuff out of this, you could argue there's a legacy that has now in, ensnared her um, and has actually... I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's pulling. I think that's obvious, right? Has uh, Well, I mean, some people will be like, wow, you guys are really... Wallace and Gromit, you're talking about the legacy of sin left by her father because he left her this robot dog. Like, Oh, come on. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Wait, she's enslaved by an evil master. <laughs> And in fact, here you've got, you've literally got the flip of Wallace and Gromit, right? You live, the, yes. the, the dog owns the human. So yes. you've got this, he says she's trapped under an evil master. Uh, so Preston is the evil master. And he's, I mean, he's basically like Satan and she's, she's bound to him and complicit in the, the, the sin. Yes. Like she's in participating the sheep wrestling, in, it. in the sheep yeah. wrestling and yep. And she, she does try to stand up at the end. Um, so Kudos to her for finally saying, I will do this no more. Um, she repents. That's what I'm talking about. She does repent. She does but, repent. Um, but I think but, you wait. But you of... nailed it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry. You, you nailed it. You nailed it. Preston has, the dog has perverted his, he's corrupted the father's legacy. Yes. Like, come on. That's a great benefit. He's, he's the fallen dog. He's, <laughs> he's fallen from Absolutely. the father's, fallen from grace. And then he's got Wendell and roped into it. So yes. like Eve, she is now sort of yes. she's she's bit on the same apple even though there's it's and she's now chafing at it she hates her sin <laughs> but she also is trapped in it like that that's exactly what is going on she's well, she's under it, a she's under a curse it is and, and it's yeah. a perversion of the idea that he's supposed to be protecting her and right now there's a wool shortage and so he has her she has a wool shop so he has turned to thievery to continue providing for her um and then so adding the dog food. And then now, yeah, duh, adding in and the murder. Murder. Um, so yeah, he he definitely. Well, one could argue then he he perverted his original programming, um, and then took it that much farther, right? Like he yeah. then became so ensnared in his own sin, and the programming becomes that much more corrupt. So it just it feeds itself and snowballs from sheep wrestling and thievery into murder. Um, at and least, what, at least, at least, killing animals, and then yeah, she then she's going to kill Wallace and and yeah, 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 to cover his tracks. And so then, what you the weird and kind of fun thing with this one is then you actually see um, Wallace, Gromit, and Sean intercede in a variety yes. of roles um uh, wallace and sean actually so actually sorry gromit actually intercedes and gets sean out of the um potential death situation he was in at the very beginning yeah. um and they take him into their home and then when gromit gets framed for the murder and all of the sheep wrestling sean and Wallace then intercede and break him out of prison. And then in doing all of that, they're actually able to uncover what's happening with Preston and his true nature. Um, yeah. And then by doing so, they're actually able to free Wendelin from this situation that she's ensnared in. Wait, um, so she's she's freed by a by a trio of, of helpers? There's, a, a, a trinity, if you will. A, a triune effort <laughs> of the... Of of Wallace, Sean, and Gromit. Yes. <laughs> no, that's that's totally what it is. Like, so here, here the three of them get to play the role of intercessor. In in this, really, it is a little bit of a uh, of the slavery to sin story, and and they get to play intercessor, right? That Romans eight thirty four says yeah. Jesus Jesus intercedes for us. First uh, John says he's our advocate with the Father. Uh, Hebrews seven says that Jesus, uh, that Jesus always lives to intercede. Like this, this is the intercessing. Uh, this is the intercessor. This is the savior who intercedes. This is the savior who comes in to rescue, and and they get to play those roles. Which you know, obviously, there's only one Christ. But I mean, even in real life, you know, like we have, you think about real life, like humans do play that role of intercessor. Uh, we, we have uh, our, our church. Our church and some friends and others have supported the, you know, there's there's re real escape from the sex trade. Mm -hmm. like, women are trapped in sin and they're, they're humans who advocate and intercede and, and try to play that Christ-like role to to break them out. So like, this this is a, a kid's way of getting it at how part of our mission in life is is to play those sub roles like Christ did for us in, in small ways we can pull out people out of enslavement or entrapment into these situations. So you actually, it's a pretty 
it is the deepest of the stories, I think, in a lot of ways, because mm -hmm. you can apply it to a lot of things, way, ways that we can intercede as humans to pull people out of places they're trapped in. And then, of course, the big story where Jesus is interceded for us. We hope you enjoyed this snack-sized taste of popcorn theology. Check out the full episode using the link in the description. Subscribe on YouTube for more content. Follow and interact on social media to share with others. And remember, you are not a mindless consumer.